I'm Dr. Norman McLean. I did uh, practice within obstetrics and gynaecology for nearly 40 years. I've done uh, in the area of maybe 8,000 births. That would include maybe 2,000 caesarean sections. I have performed abortions uh, early in my career. Over that time, I would have certainly done between one and 200 terminations of pregnancy. So I know about the technique. I stopped doing abortions as a result of a, what I would call a revelation or an understanding that came to me quite suddenly. Uh, and th this relates to a teenage experience of having read about the German uh, destruction of the Jewish people, the six million innocent Jewish people during the war. And when I read about that as a teenager, it greatly troubled me. And I struggled to cope with it uh, and couldn't understand how a democratic Christian society could do that. It, it, it was incomprehensible to me how such a thing could happen on such a scale. I knew Mr Hitler was a bad man maybe, but how could all the people who were involved in turning the gas taps on do it? Well, after a year of performing the abortions and being somewhat uneasy but cooperating with the system, it came to me that I was doing the same thing. I was doing exactly the same thing. I was removing, destroying innocent, defenseless, unborn children. But in my mind, they were equal to Jews or equal to disabled children that the, Jew, that the German folk had killed 270,000 of them before they moved on to the Jews. And dramatically, really, I, I realized this is not right. I, this is not what I should be doing. Uh, this is not the medicine the uh, life-giving, healing medicine that I wanted to practice. And from that day, I stopped. Today, I'm going to describe a first trimester surgical abortion. This is the most frequently performed abortion technique and is usually typically performed between 5 and 13 weeks of pregnancy. The cervix acts as a gate that stays closed for the duration of pregnancy, protecting the baby until it is ready for birth. The abortionist uses a series of metal rods called dilators like these, which increase in thickness and diameter and the abortionist inserts them into the cervix progressively to dilate it. I am going to describe a second trimester surgical abortion. This procedure is called dilatation and evacuation. It is performed between usually 13 to 14 weeks and 24 weeks of pregnancy. Yes, absolutely they are applicable. If there is an increase in late-term abortions after the time in which the baby is viable, that is from 22 to 24 weeks onwards, then the abortionist either has to kill the baby while it is still in the womb, usually by an injection directly into the heart of a potent drug such as insulin or potassium, or there is a high likelihood that the baby will be born alive. Then the abortionist has a very serious dilemma because this was a baby that was supposed to be dead when it was born, but is now alive. How is that going to be dealt with? And the question then arises, how will we deal with this baby that was supposed to be dead? And the question of infanticide will inevitably arise. It is a real issue and will almost certainly be a problem. It has to be understood that in each and every abortion, a baby dies and is killed. That is why the Royal Commission was so wise in stating there are competing rights between the mother who is living and the unborn child 
who is also living. And that has to be weighed up, those competing rights. But with the new law, it would seem that the mother has all the rights and no recognition of the existence of the baby, the life of the baby, the value of the baby is considered. It's shocking beyond belief.